October 10th, 2021, and this is our Prophecy News Update. And let's begin in a word of prayer, and I'll let you know what the headlines are of what we'll be looking at uh, in this update. So a lot of stuff going on. Uh, it's a really compact but important update for us. Father, we come before you. We thank you for this time. And Lord, we thank you for prophecy, Lord, that you share with us um, from your eternal view. Lord, you see everything as now. And so we thank you for speaking to us through your word, uh, telling us, Lord, what to be aware of, what to look for as we continue to watch the current events align with Scripture. Uh, and, and it is amazing because many of these events are for the first time in world history. So, Lord, we thank you for these things. And you let us know these things because you want us to look up and know that our redemption is near as we see our world growing darker and darker. So, Lord, we pray tonight that we might be encouraged, that we may be strengthened, that we might be filled with your Spirit. Lord, that we may be looking at this world through the lens of Scripture. Lord, that we know truth and that we walk in truth in these days and through these times. And I pray for anyone who's listening tonight um, as well, Lord, just bring great encouragement. I know what we're seeing in this world at times can be depressing and discouraging, but I pray that our faith uh, would continue to be renewed, that our hearts would be inspired, and Lord, help us to love on and help and share um, your word with others. Lord, just leading people to the cross. So Lord, we give thanks to you this evening. Bless this update. Now we ask in Jesus' name and God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Today's update will include updates that relate to the following. Um, we're going to be looking at the pandemic that is going on right now. Uh, also, global government control. We'll be looking at some of those items concerning globalization. Uh, we will be looking at something very interesting, but as we were looking at the World Economic Forum of what they predict for 2030, one of the things that they had in there was organ production. And there's actually an article um, out of Israel specifically on that. We're going to take a look at that. Also, there's an article on the evolutionary studies. It's actually kind of funny, but we'll be looking at the evolutionary st uh, study that they have on a whale uh, that was discovered in the Sahara. Also wars and rumors of wars, Ezekiel 38, and also Ezekiel 37, which deals with Aliyah, with the Jews returning to Israel. And then we will wrap up in a uh, prophecy actually that Islam has concerning Jerusalem and Afghanistan. This was very interesting, and that's where we will wrap up uh, in our update. I want to share with you some scriptures because people often ask, you know, where is this in the Bible? So I'm going to read to you a series of scriptures, and this is really the basis uh, of where we decided to select these articles. So under wars and rumors of wars, I would encourage you, uh, also natural disasters and pestilences, to read the whole chapter of Matthew chapter 24. Uh, we are currently on Sunday mornings going through the Gospel of Matthew, and we're a ways yet from chapter 24, but you'll definitely want to hear that when we get to it. But Matthew 24, 7 says, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. These are international wars. Uh, these are wars between neighboring countries and internal wars. And there will be famines, shortages, pestilences. These are diseases, viruses. Uh, this is global scale. Earthquakes, number of you know, increases in natural disasters and weather situations in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And this is where we find ourselves right now. Concerning globalization, in the book of Revelation chapter 13, it speaks of the coming of a world leader who will control humanity, who will control the world. And he is known as the Antichrist in the scriptures. He is, will be known in this world as a one world leader. And one of the things that he does is he, can, he establishes a one world religion, which we looked at last week, which is very much in the works right now in Abu Dhabi. Um, if you go back to last week's update, you'll be able to see that and photos of what is going on right now. But he will control one world religion, a global currency, 
global health care, you know, global government. Um, and one of the things it says in Revelation chapter 13 is that, uh, that you will not have the ability, you will not be able to buy or sell without what is coming. It's not here yet, but what's known as the mark of the beast. So you have to have the beast to this one world leader to have the mark of the beast. But one of the things we see that is a forerunner to this is right now we're finding that throughout the world that if you don't have, you won't be able to buy or sell without the vaccine or the vaccine passport. Huge push for this. Go to school, um, have a job. So we're, we're watching this precursor, in a sense, to this globalization movement. Um, also, Matthew chapter 24 also speaks of great deception that leads people away from the truth. Also tonight, Ezekiel chapter 37, Aliyah. Aliyah means that the Jews will be returning to the land from all over the world. And I want to read Ezekiel 37 to you. It says, Thus, thus says the Lord, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. This is speaking of the Messiah. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. And this again is in, the, in Ezekiel uh, 36 and 37. Speak of what is one of the major signs of the times is when the Jew is back in the land, when they are back in Israel, which was fulfilled in May 14, 1948. And then Jerusalem had to be reestablished. Uh, and Jerusalem was reestablished and now is under the control of the Jews in 1967. And now they are preparing for the rebuilding of the temple, which is another major sign of the coming of the Messiah. Right now they do not control the Temple Mount, but we do know that during the tribulation period, that is after the church is gone, God's evacuation plan known as the rapture, the church goes out because we're not appointed to wrath, that after that point in time, the Antichrist, the one world leader, will be revealed. The Jews, uh, he will bring peace between Israel and Islam. That's why this one world religion that we looked at last week is incredible, because the Vatican has announced in Abu Dhabi that they are building on one complex a church, a mosque, and a temple, all next to each other. And I believe this will be a forerunner to the Jews rebuilding their temple next to the mosque there in Jerusalem. And from what I've been reading, they plan to build these types of, uh, you know, this, this uh, one religion complexes uh, in specific cities throughout the world. And it's going to happen quickly. Uh, so incredible stuff that we're seeing concerning the nation of Israel. This is when prophecy is in full motion. Jerusalem is in order. Here, Ezekiel 37, the Jews are being gathered and are coming from all over the world back to the land. And Ezekiel 38, which is the next chapter, then speaks of a coming war that will include Russia, Iran, Turkey, parts of Africa, Libya, the Middle East. Some have speculated even areas of the north where we're seeing a lot of uh, motion right now from China. That's a debatable topic. But anyways, Ezekiel 38 is clearly in motion. And for the first time in world history, these countries are combined and are uh, becoming an alliance against the nation of Israel. And if you watched our previous update, Saudi Arabia, as it also says, Sheba and Didan are, have now made a, a military agreement with Russia, which means that when that war happens, they will not, just as the Ezekiel 38 states, they will not be engaged in the war because now they have made a military agreement with Russia. Um, they have literally are moving away from the United States as the United States just, we just pulled some of our missile defense uh, program out of there. So I know it seems as we watch prophecy that in the world, it is true, things are falling apart. But if you're a Christian and you're waiting for the return of the Lord and you're following God's word, listen to me, things are falling right into place. And these are days to look up for our redemption draws near. With that, we're going to start our articles. And so uh, we, we want you to know that everything we show here is documented, is coming from specific uh, news sources. So the first one up is we're going to be looking at the pandemic of COVID-19. This is from Matthew. Our biblical uh, scriptural topic comes from Matthew 24-7, which we read to you. This is the Washington Times. 
and they are continuing to press with the vaccinations. Uh, and this one says millions of kids, coronavirus shots, ready to go, initial doses to be shared on a population basis. Within days of regulators clearing the nation's first coronavirus vaccine for younger children, federal officials say they will begin pushing out as many as 20 million doses of the Pfizer biotech pediatric vaccine to immunize school age kids across the United States and a bid to control the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, you know, some of the things that are, are concerning about this is that uh, kids are least impacted by uh, the virus. They recover so quickly, just like they would a, a normal virus, sometimes even faster. Um, and it is, it is not even 1% of kids that end up um, in a, a serious condition. I'm not making light of the virus, but what is concerning, and the why I'm saying this, is uh, this is not approved. I, we just watched the FDA panel that was very concerned about this vaccine being given to children. The kickoff of the long-awaited children's vaccination campaign is expected as soon as early November. At this, and actually, uh, I've heard it announced as early as this Halloween, so maybe or even earlier than November. And this time around, the government has purchased enough doses to give two shots to all 28 million eligible children ages 5 to 11. And as I've shared before, please do your homework. Um, if you decide to take the vaccine, or you decide to give it to members of your family, just do your homework on it. Research it. Um, you definitely want to look at the data that is out there. We've been sharing on this literally uh, each week. Um, but we give you the sites. You can look at the CDC and the FDA, and there's many other sites, especially in Israel, where the United States is getting a lot of their data from. But I would highly encourage you to do your homework. Um, next subject is going to be government control. Revelation chapter 13, you cannot buy or sell. Uh, this is from Fox News on October 4th, 2021, New York's largest private health care provider fired 1,400 employees who refused the vaccine. Employees who refused the shots face suspension and termination. Workers terminated because of refusal to get the vaccine are not eligible for unemployment insurance. This is outrageous without a doctor approved request for medical accommodations. C can you imagine all of the doctors and nurses and health care workers that served over the past two years, uh, you know, co all people, whether you had COVID or you had other diseases and sicknesses, um, went through, many of them did not even uh, contract the virus. And for those that did, they recovered and had natural strong immunity uh, are now, the, we called the, once the heroes, that they, they have been asked to, to give up their jobs um, with no unemployment insurance, no coverage afterwards absolutely crazy and something that you should absolutely be outraged about. Um, this is, and the reason why is because this country has what is called the Constitution. Um, and we have First Amendment rights that are here. And, and, and we also have, you know, just the, the freedom of, of choice. And these are, these are health care professionals. Um, these are people who treat other people with these conditions and have followed protocol, um, have incredible, many of them uh, immunity and, and have really been the heroes, the unsung heroes of, of this pandemic. Please pray for them and their families. Also under government control uh, on Fox News October 2nd is largest Louisiana health system finds employees with unvaccinated spouses. Usher Health will start charging employees $200 per month or $100 per pay period if their spouse or partner is unvaccinated. One of the things that is, is not being looked at is for people, so many people have had COVID, of the natural immunity that the CDC itself says that it's rare for someone to get COVID a second time. It's, it's not the norm. Next one is under government control, Revelation chapter 13. You cannot buy or sell. This is from Fox News, October 6th. UC Health denies kidney transplant. This is someone who's dying who needs a, a, a kidney transplant. To unvaccinated woman in stage 5 renal failure. A Colorado woman with stage 5 renal failure is scrambling to find a new hospital to perform a kidney transplant after a health system in the state denied the transplant due to her and her donor 
being unvaccinated against the coronavirus. Here I am willing to be a direct donor to her. It does not affect any other patient on the transplant list. Jamie Foner uh, and Leilani Lutelli's kidney donor told CBS4, how can I sit here and allow them to murder my friend when I've got a perfectly good kidney and can save her life? Under government control, Revelation 13, this is Fox News from October 8th of 2021. Regarding Steve Forbes, Steve Forbes has been watching the economy on dismal new jobs report. This is from the report from this past week. Crazy, confusing mandates hurting the U.S. economy. Steve Forbes says Biden's whole thing on vaccines is very confusing. People don't like the coercion part of it, and it's leading people to getting fired. And they're what we're watching right now, uh, jobs just fall by the wayside. Um, in this country. There's, there's huge problems throughout all the sectors, especially right now, the shipping industry. Next article is Government Control, Fox News, October 9th. Uh, this is now people that are protesting. We've looked at protests throughout Europe. We've watched here on our updates, protests in New York and Australia um, and throughout the United States. Rome protesters clash with police as thousands pack the streets in opposition to COVID vaccine rule. The certification in Italy, known as a green pass, takes effect on Friday and applies to public and private workplaces. Thousands of demonstrators marched down Rome's Via uh, uh, Veneto and other main streets on Saturday, some clashing with police to protest a government rule requiring COVID-19 vaccines or negative tests to access workplaces next week. And as we know, again, protests are being seen all over the United States and as well as throughout Europe, Australia, many other countries. Next article is from the uh, Jerusalem Post. And again, I, I should have pulled up that picture for you, but if you've been with us and watching these, the World Economic Forums uh, predicts that in 2030 that they will have, or, or the science field will have the, the ability to make organs on demand. And look at this article. Israeli scientist aims to replace human organs like car parts on demand. Imagine a world where a person experiencing the first stages of kidney failure could simply get a replacement organ like a car owner would purchase a new engine from the shop. As people are expected to live until 100 and beyond. So with these replacements, people are going to, they say, are going to live much, much longer. That they'll be able to live beyond 100 years old. There are efforts underway to make that viable without having to sacrifice too much quality of life, Cohen said. Living longer and healthier is something people are actually talking about, he told the Jerusalem Post. Aging is being considered a disease that can be cured rather than something that is inevitable and normal. Here's how they're going to do it. This is very interesting. We remove, they, they're going to use pigs. Imagine that. Now listen to this. This is the Jewish people, the nation of Israel, and pigs are not kosher. They're not, uh, so we remove the pig's internal layer of blood vessels and replace it with a human layer, thereby humanizing the blood vessels of the organ and generating a hybrid organ a pig organ with humanized blood vessels, Cohen said. This is the way to surmount the barrier to pig organs in humans. And this, I'm not making this up. This is the Jerusalem Post. The method has been successfully tried so far in a number of organs and limbs, including the heart, lungs, liver, kidney, and pancreas, he said. The experiments until now were uh, out uh, ex vivo, which means outside the body. Cohen said he plans to work with third-party pig manufacturers that would grow and breed pigs that are safer for human use, and the organs uh, could then be ready on demand. You do not need many pigs to solve the global shortage, he stressed. In the U.S. alone, there are more than 100 million pigs being used for the food industry, and you need less than 1% of them to get an unlimited supply of organs and to solve the global shortage. The future is here, Cohen said. The future is now. And this is all a part of the World Economic Forum. Again, predicted this is to be in, in effect by 2030. Uh, many of the other things that we looked at are well underway, including the United States becoming 
you know, no longer being a superpower, the shipping industry. I mean, all the things that we looked at are very much in the works. Our next one is uh, government and genetics, Revelation chapter 13, the times of Israel, October 2021. Bennett says, Israel to genetically scan all arrivals for the coronavirus. No details of program immediately available. Many have been wondering how they're going to do this, if there'll be some type of uh, physical scanner, kind of like an x-ray that when you go through the airport that is able to scan your body. Um, what I have heard, this is not in the article, but what I have heard uh, potentially that there may be, uh, you know, that they will be able to determine through what's in the vaccine that you are vaccinated or they will be able to somehow uh, genetically identify uh, that you, you have the virus. But these, these scans are very much in the works um, and will be available. And this really fits in line again with Revelation chapter 13 that you will not be able to buy or sell or travel or do anything unless you have uh, the mark. And so again, this is not the mark, but clearly we are headed uh, in that direction and being prepared for it. Moving on to deception, uh, Matthew chapter 24, and also you know Romans chapter 1, but this deals with creation and evolution. This is from the Jerusalem Post, um, October of 2021. I found this, um, actually go forward, Ben, to the next, uh, next article. And then we'll have to come back to that one. But this one deals with the uh, ancient killer whale with legs identified as a new species. So I looked at this and I said, wow, this seems like an interesting article. It says here that the 43 million year old remains of a four-legged, now realize they're saying it's 43 million years old, remains of a four-legged killer whale found in Egypt's portion of the Sahara Desert. So you have a whale in the Sahara Desert. Have been identified as a newly discovered species. Study finds are reported last month. Fragments of the skeleton of the beast reveal it had a long snout, sharp pointed teeth, powerful jaws, considered the killer whale of its day. It looked like a cross between a dolphin and a giant aquatic wolf. Look at the next picture. This is what they think it looked like. Uh, and... It likely reached up to 10 feet in length and weighed nearly a ton. The unearthed fossilized remains, you can show the next picture, include the skull, the ribs. This is what they found of it, skull, ribs, and other parts. Uh, they were dug up during an international expedition to the Fayum Depression, an animal graveyard near the Nile Valley in 2008. The Great Desert was born, this is interesting, about 7 million years ago, and had been dis, uh, covered by a vast sea called uh, Tethys. Here we have discovery of skull ribs. Um, you know, it looks obviously here like a jaw as well. What blew me away about this is they say that this is a whale. Uh, all they have is a skull. They have the jaw and ribs. And they say that this whale had four legs. And the reason why, and they didn't find any legs. They didn't find anything whatsoever. This is all that they found. You're looking at it. And so they said that because it was found in the Sahara Desert, how did it get there? It must have walked on four legs to the middle of the desert, and that's where they found. And they say at the beginning of the article that this creature is 43 million years old. So instead of saying, hey, the flood, this is how we have sea creatures and mammals in the Himalayas and in the Saharas and throughout the world, this attests to the flood, they say, no, this, we found a jaw and, and a skull, and we think it had four legs and it walked across the desert, and, and, and this is unbelievable. Um, absolutely amazing. So anyways, I thought this was very funny of how they come to these conclusions and they avoid the biblical obvious. Next will be pro-life, the Texas law banning most abortions. So we are watching this battle go back and forth with the Texas law that uh, now restricted abortions, um, then was overruled by a court, and it's going back and forth. Uh, this is the article here in Answer Prayer. Federal Appeals Court panel reinstates Texas law banning most abortions. So keep praying for this, uh, praying for the unborn, and that this is obviously going to be, it's, you're going to see this probably go back and forth in Texas and also there are other states that are 
uh, vying for this as well, but you're also seeing tremendous pressure from the federal government. It will ultimately land up at the Supreme Court, um, and we pray that they follow God's word um, concerning the unborn. So please pray for that. It's a very, very serious issue. It is a tremendous spiritual battle in our courts right now. We're going to move on to wars and rumors of wars. Matthew chapter 14 uh, speaks of these wars. Um, uh, Also, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 24 speaks of these wars. Uh, Not Matthew 14, but Matthew 24. Uh, This here is China makes largest Taiwan air incursion ever. There's a lot of tension right now between the United States and China. In the past four days, China's Air Force has flown 149 aircraft inside Taiwan's air defense zone, including 56 um, this past Monday, the largest incursion ever, which included three dozen fighter jets and a dozen bombers. The first wave of Chinese jets arrived on Friday, the anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. The communist victory over U.S.-supported nationalist forces in China's decades-long civil war that ended in 1949. It's very obvious, based on the United States' weakness right now, that China is going to continue to, um, I believe at some point, may even try to take over uh, Taiwan. And the United States is is really showing a lot of weakness right now. We're going to move on to the Ezekiel 38 war. This is from the Jerusalem Post. Uh, actually, this is today, and uh, Iran claims, this actually just came out before I came out here, but Iran claims to have 80% of uranium needed to build a nuclear bomb. Uh, many believe that they have already achieved their goal uh, of, the, you know, of the nuclear material that they need for a bomb. Um, and the most concerning thing, I think, right now for Israel is the Israeli government you know, we've, we've been, you know, watching Israel of how they're going to respond to this, but under the new government, there's a lot of concern that with a weak Israeli government and a weak United States government, that what we're beginning to see is really just them wanting to negotiate with Iran. And Iran is stalling. They're saying, we're going to meet, we're not going to meet, but what they're doing is they're building and they're going to establish this. So Europe, I think, is really thrown in the towel and said, you know, let's just try to negotiate with Iran, uh, which is really going to be useless. Um, and people are now beginning to wonder, what is Israel going to do? Are they going to stop uh, what Iran is doing, which means that there will be a war? Or are they going to just negotiate? Uh, but ultimately, as we know in Scripture, this war um, is coming. So something to keep an eye on. Ezekiel 38, our next I- uh, article October 8, 2021, from the Jerusalem Press, growing relations between Turkey and Russia is concerning. This is literally directly Ezekiel 38. As Ankara engages in outreach to avoid diplomatic isolation, Jerusalem is likely to be wary. So they are very concerned. Speaking to reporters after the meeting with Putin, Erdogan noted that he had proposed that Turkey work together with Russia on the construction of two more nuclear power plants on Turkish soil. So Russia is helping Iran build their nuclear program, and they are also helping Turkey with their nuclear program. The Russian company, uh, Rosatom, is currently building a power plant in uh, southern Turkey. The Turkish president also said last week that Turkey still intends to purchase a second supply of S-400 missile defense system from Russia. The purchase of the system by Turkey last year led to U.S. sanctions on Turkey's defense industry uh, directorate and the cancellation of Turkish reception of the F-35 fighter jets. In an interview with CBS Network quoted by Reuters, the Turkish president said that in the future, nobody will be able to interfere in terms of what kind of defense systems we acquire, from which country, and at what level, which means nobody's going to be able to tell us anything of what we're to do. And this is one of the countries, again, listed in Ezekiel 38 that will come against Israel and is aligned with Russia um, and Iran, as we can see. Our next article is from the Jerusalem Post. This is Aliyah, the Jews returning uh, to Israel in huge numbers. Incredible. Aliyah is up 31% over 2020 numbers so far. Aliyah to Israel has bounced back strongly in 2021. This was after the major year of COVID. So far, with some 20,360 arriving 
in Israel to date. What is amazing is if you are a Jew anywhere in the world, you can just fly to Israel. They will pay, and they will also establish you, educate you, and get you into work in the country. It is an amazing program that they have. Um, so 20,360 arriving in Israel to date compared to 15,598 during the corresponding period in 2020, an increase of 31%. And obviously, this is because of COVID, where travel was restricted. The figures come ahead of the national holiday, Aliyah Day, on October 13th, which celebrates immigrants to Israel from around the world. As we close, our final article deals with Jerusalem. This is a, a major one. And if you have a Bible, will you please turn with me to the book of Zechariah, chapter 12. And this deals specifically with Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, and you need to see this, I hope you see this in the Bible, says, The burden of the word of the Lord against Israel, thus says the Lord, who stretches out heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. This is regarding Jerusalem in the end times. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling. Jerusalem is the place where Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all meet. The Muslims are there on Friday. The Jews worship there on Saturday. The Christians worship there on Sunday. It's the most vied for piece of real estate in all of the world. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling to all surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces though all nations of the earth, all nations of the earth are gathered against it. Let's look at this article. This is from uh, the uh, CBN News. Taliban sees U.S. pullout from, people have asked, what is the significance of Afghanistan? And listen to this. Taliban sees U.S. pullout from Afghanistan as fulfillment of end times Islamic prophecy about Jerusalem. Now, Afghanistan is listed in the nations there in Ezekiel 38, but there's more here. It's very interesting. The Taliban and... Uh, so this is as a fulfillment of... Islam. Now, now, we're dealing here, speaking about Islamic prophecy about Jerusalem. What are they thinking? The Taliban and other radical Muslims see the takeover of Afghanistan not only as a military victory, but as a fulfillment of Islamic prophecy. The Taliban Twitter page carried this message. Black flags will arise from Khorasan. Khorasan is another name for Afghanistan. And nothing will be able to return them. This is very important. I haven't heard this talked about in the mainstream media at all, but if we look at some of the main end times prophecies with Islam, I mean one of the biggest prophecies, there's a prophecy that says armies carrying black flags will come from the area east of Khorasan, which speaking here of Afghanistan, said Richardson. Khorasan is the ancient land that includes modern northwestern Pakistan, eastern Iran, and all of Afghanistan. Afghanistan is the heart of Khorasan, said Hussein. What is happening in Afghanistan is validating the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad that Muslim armies designed to come out of Afghanistan, of Khorasan, no one will be able to stop it until it reaches Jerusalem. This is their prophecy. The prophecy says Jerusalem will be the final goal of the army of the Mahdi. This is their Messiah. When they plant their flags on the Temple Mount. Let's go back to Zechariah chapter 12, verse 8. And this is what God's answer to that prophecy is. And that day the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David. The house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. This is what God is saying concerning that day. Look at verse 10. And I will, this is critical for you to see. And I will, this is the Old Testament, Zechariah. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Listen to this. And they will look on me whom they pierced. Who are they speaking about? Jesus Christ. They will look upon him, the Messiah, whom they pierced. 
as he comes down and as he conquers all those who've come against Jerusalem. Yes, they will mourn for him. If you have any doubt, if it's the one who's pierced, notice what, what the Lord goes on to say. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieves for him as one grieves for a firstborn. Absolutely incredible. As I close, I just want to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4. And I just want to encourage you, church, I know that for those of you listening to this, um, for those of you that, that seriously follow prophecy, um, incredible stuff that we've read and what we continue to see each week, please continue to keep your eyes on the Lord. And just remember that things are as, as difficult as they are. May God bless you. May he fill you with his spirit. May he give you wisdom. May you continue to fight the good fight and to keep the faith. And live out your convictions in the Lord in these days. First Thessalonians 5, 4 says, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night, which means they're just checked out. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, this is the armor of God and love, and as the helmet of hope of salvation, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should all live together with him. Therefore, comfort one another and build up one another, just as you also are doing. Father, we thank you so much for your word, and Lord, for being able to look at these events. And we pray, God, that we continue to look at this world through the lens of Scripture and know that things are moving forward, Lord, throughout the world, Lord, right in Israel, throughout the Middle East. And God, we pray, Lord, encourage us. So I know many are dealing with anxiety and concern and worry, uh, many facing these new mandates and laws and concerned about how to deal with it. Lord, help us again to continue to fight the good fight, to keep the faith, to look unto you, the author and finisher. And I pray tonight that you'd pour out your spirit. I pray for anyone listening tonight, if you haven't accepted Christ in your life, and you're realizing, you know, the very things that we're seeing in the news are going down or aligning with scripture, pray tonight. Ask God to forgive you for all of your sins. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, that he fill you with his Holy Spirit that he lead you and guide you through these days. And get plugged into a good Bible teaching church. You know, you're welcome to join us online or if you're local here in person. Um, and to seek out if you live in a different area, a different community, um, to get plugged in somewhere where you can be encouraged. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some as you see the day approaching. And it means stay together, stay connected. Um, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this evening. May the Lord bless you and keep you and encourage you and your families. And Lord willing, we will see you next week in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you guys.